think I'd just I'd like to welcome you to today. We've been looking forward, uh, all of us from the team, to uh, be able to present some of your uh, our work and findings to you and, and to have, have engaged in the discussion. So um, we have, uh, uh, I want to start by just setting the scene a little bit in terms of the questions we are we're asking in this, in this, uh, this project. The background for the research project that we started two years ago, we started discussing it a little bit before two years ago, was this dilemma that India is facing in terms of constructing its political path in a way that is able to generate growth, but it also is ecologically sustainable, and that it is uh, socially inclusive, but also politically feasible in terms of the power structures in, in, in the federal Indian, Indian political system. So, in this context, uh, India has relied heavily on laws to protect interests of vulnerable groups, interests of ecosystems, but still, although everything is showing that displacement and ecological environmental degradation is rampant and continuing. So, what we wanted to investigate in, with this project is the role of law in these processes. So, under which conditions do the laws that are enacted uh, in different parts of the system serve to protect the interests that, it, on the face of it, are there to protect? When does it allow or facilitate even displacement? So to investigate the interfaces between law and politics in this field was what we wanted to do. When we, when we uh, applied for, for this project, which has a long title, uh, land rights and environmental protection and inclusive sustainable development within the Indian federal system. And we succeeded in getting funding from the Indigenous Research Council to do this. And the project is a collaboration between the Centre for Policy Research in India, where Namita Wahi, uh, who will speak very shortly, is based, and you will most of you know her. And uh, she was talking a little bit about CPR and the Centre on Law and Social Transformation, uh, which is it's a centre that's based in Norway, in Bergen. It's, uh, uh, it's a joint initiative by the University of Bergen and the Christian Mikkelsen Institute. But it is a global centre. It's a virtual centre primarily with global fellows uh, in all parts of the world. And the idea and the, the, the aim of the centre is to research law as an instrument of social change in different settings and in different ways. And for those of you who are interested in knowing more about the centre, we have a uh, Facebook page, we have a web page where there is more information about the centre. And we also, if people are interested in joining as fellows, that is also possible. So if you're interested, I, I'll be happy to say more about that later. But that was, and then of course, Namika has also been part of this discussion for, uh, around the centre from, from when it started. So, so this is, is, is the background. The, and this is why we, we, we wanted to to uh, to have this project, and we were happy to have it to have it uh, to be able to do it. So, more specifically, what we try to do is to investigate how state institutions manage the tension between individuals and communities' rights to property on the one hand, and the state's power to acquire property for the purposes of economic development and, and social resilience. Distribution and, and Namika will talk more about how there is this myriad of laws that differs between regions of the vast continent that India is, but also in each locality with several layers of law, and how even no, even to map this is a huge, it's a huge um, uh, effort and enterprise. Um, and and then in this, uh, it, we also want to to inquire, sort of investigate the structure and functioning and understand of the legal and institutional apparatus that governs, in particular, the rights of traditional communities in different contexts. And um, uh, we have chosen three states of India with different types. Of, I'll come back to that a little bit later, but with different sort of overall regulations of this, the protection of, of rights of traditional communities. We also uh, uh, aim to investigate how um, the development and implementation of our environmental law protection interacts with property rights and other rights of traditional communities. And finally, uh, 
how the legal strategy is adopted to deal with these challenges are shaped by the political and institutional factors, such as federal coalition policies, uh, asymmetric federalism, and the role of the state. So it is a huge research agenda. And uh, but and in terms of the in terms of the analytical approach, what we so sort of the main heuristic device that we use is to try and look at how law shapes the opportunity structures of actors placed differently in the uh, in the, the political and, and social setting. So it, it, how it shapes different layers of law it shapes the the opportunity structures of of traditional corporations, but also power holders at different levels in this, this system, and how the social, legal, political uh, aspects of, of, the, of the opportunity structure interact. So that's our, our main heuristic device that we're using in this in analytical approach that we're using. And try to understand how the different uh, uh, approaches to, to the question of, of protecting these rights are, are shaping this differently. We'll come back to all this later. But as you understand, this is a, these are huge issues. We have a small core team. We're all here. And so it is, as I was saying, it's, it's Namita Vahid, uh, who's a lawyer from Harvard Law School, graduated with a PhD recently. Uh, it is Kutak um, who's the, uh, the head of the CPR. And Paula, which I've misspelled the name, with the topic, I don't know why that happened, but he's currently. Uh, here at the Hobbit Law School as a student. We've also, uh, on the Hobbit side, been very happy to have uh, that we can be a on the advisory board uh, of, the, of the project and, and here today. Um, and, uh, so then, and, um, and I'm currently based uh, as a fellow at the, uh, at the FAP Center on Helping Human Rights at Harvard, but I'm normally in Norway. And the rest of the new team is um, Kavita. And, Cause constantly misspelling names, but I can't understand that. Uh, and the Hugo Stockia, who's sitting in the back, and you'll meet all of them in, in due course. And I'm, con I'm consistently bad with names. Um, yeah. And then in terms of where we are in the project, we're a bit more than a year into the project. Um, we started looking at three states. We originally had the ambition to look at four. We don't know if we'll get there at this stage of the project, but we started looking at three. Marilaya, which is uh, Hear More About from Kavita, that is today, and the Pradesh in Gujarat, that uh, Namita will be talking more about. And, and that these states have different status with regard to the different types of laws that from the federal level governs. Uh, the, the, the rights of, of the traditional communities in this in these states. And and we've also started working from different ends of the research questions. So so another will present the work done on the mapping and of land and regulation. Uh, and and then uh, Kavita will present some sort of local case studies looking at these interfaces in the context of the Malaya. We will, but since this field is so big and we are so few, <laughs> and the resources are very limited. We have also seen as an important part of the project to bridge and link and reach out to other groups in India who are doing related work. Because what we we had the opening conference of the project in Delhi in January of this year, and what was really striking to all of us was how topical the issue was, how incredibly interest not interest this conference was was uh, creating. Uh, both from the media, from political uh, sort of um, and administrative um, quarters, but also from academics and other people working on these issues. So we were been working. Then Namita, we know that she's back in Delhi, has been able to do more in terms of networking, and also we have an online platform that Namita will, will be talking a little bit more about. And in that context, we also because. There are people who can be here, but who would be interested in hearing what our discussions. We have arranged for this to be recorded. But if any of you mind recording, we will not record the answer and question session. So just, just let us know. Then we'll just do the presentation. Okay. Um. So, with that, I will give the word to.